Hello and welcome along to the first in a new series of This Racing Life. Here's what's coming up. Well, this week we pay a visit to Harry Whittington after his stable star St Calvados made a winning return to action at Cheltenham recently. We head down to Surrey where up and coming trainer Toby Laws looks to the future after five years with Nicky Henderson. And Rachel Casey chats to Harry Bezik about his career as a rider so far. Harry, the, uh, well, just looking outside, the winter months are coming. Um, as regards the summer months and this jump season so far, it's been a fantastic time of things, hasn't it? Uh, yeah, it's been an absolutely fantastic summer. It's the best summer we've ever had. I think we've just had one or two more horses to run through the summer, but they were in, um, you know, great shape, the horses. And, you know, we had one or two that were able to, you know, win three each, like Sir Robbie and Hen Bell and Henrietta Bell. And, and Salto Chisco came back and won a couple, so that was great. But it's, it's got, off, got us off to a flyer. And I suppose going into October, there's kind of a 33% strike rate. It's, um, you know, with the winter horses, kind of, you just feel there's a bit less, less pressure. And, um, you know, and, uh, you know, the preparation for, the, for all the winter horses is, it went very well. So, you know, it kind of sets you up, really, for, for the winter. So how are you feeling about things at the moment? Oh, yeah, look... You know, I'm really happy. I think, um, you know, I'm, I'm, very, I'm always very kind of uh, cautious of them coming on a bit for their first runs. I don't like to do too much with them. And, uh, you know, so I think there's a, they've been running very well. There's a few that have won. And if they haven't won, they've, they've hit the crossbar and they will improve for their runs. So, you know, I'm very happy with where we are. Obviously, to have 16 winners um, by now, we're a good bit ahead of where we've been before. Yeah. Good bit ahead on prize money. So, um yeah, no, it's, I, I couldn't be happier, really. Just to look at the gallop situation now, you're in a different place already, aren't you? Yeah, definitely. Uh, obviously, with the added sand gallop, which, which we put in in the, in the uh, quiet months, you know, it's, um, it's, it's a fabulous surface. Obviously, you know, in Ireland, they've proved it, uh, that this the sand gallops are, are, the, are the, uh, you know, the in thing. And uh, so we felt that we, we needed to get one in. And... Um, you know, it's it's it is it is what it is. It's it's an extremely good surface for getting horses fit. You know, and um, you know, it, it seems to be working anyway for sure. You know, it, they're certainly looking in better, more fitter, better shape going going into their first runs. So, um, you know, I think I think I've just been conscious not that we don't do too much, and that we you know that they would do. We allow them to come on for their first runs because it's a long season. You know, and. Um, that's been, uh, you know, in the forefront of my mind as well. And objectively, after the, the summer that you've had, you've had your first winner at Cheltenham, which is a significant thing and something that I know that you really wanted. You've got the flagship horse in St Calvados and, and some, some serious exciting youngsters having been out and about. What, what, do you, what do you allow yourself to dream about this year? I, I just feel that you take each day as it comes and if you do the right thing by your horses, then that's, you know, uh, that's priority. And um, so, you know, a strike rate above 20% will probably mean, especially this season, we have more runners that we'll get uh, our maximum amount of winners that we've had, you know, in previous years. Uh, and I, I always have um, sort of you know, personal targets towards graded winners. And I, yeah. I suppose as a team, everybody here uh, at the yard, you know, it's so much more to celebrate when you have a big winner. And uh, we've been very lucky, actually. Um, you know, we've had a couple of graded winners the last two seasons in a row. Um, we had a grade one winner, obviously, back in 2016. So if we could get another grade one winner, that would be amazing. Um, you know, but you know, graded winners are obviously very special. So and it's very special to us as a team. So um, you know, that would be, I suppose, that would be, you know, a big ambition for this season. I just mentioned that because just out there, actually, it's a. He didn't get to write any more chapters in the book, did he, Arzal? But you're, you've remembered him by naming a barn after him. And he, he, he's always going to be on the mantelpiece, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, we'll, we'll always miss him. We don't dwell on it as such, but we'll always remember him. We'll never forget him because he won us our, grade, our first grade one and um, yeah. he put us on the map and he was an extraordinary horse. He was a great character and he was a great friend. And we'll always remember him. Um, and so, yeah, obviously it made sense to name a barn after him and it's aptly named and... Um, Obviously, it's got some good names in there now, so hopefully they can, uh, you know, um, you know, go on to achieve good things as well. Just, just to look at some of the staff, the interaction you have with them, 
Um, it seems a really happy, buzzy place. Very much so. Um, you know, when I worked at Malcolm Bastards, we had a great team. And when I left Malcolm's, I vowed that I would always have a great team. Yeah. You know, you're only as good as the people around you. Um, and um, I had a vision when I set up my own business in 2007, just breaking and pre-training, that I'd always have good staff and I'd look after them well. And, um, you know, we've got a great team here. My assistant trainer, Joe Clinton, has been with me now for 10 years. And, um, you know, he's, he's a great friend as well. And, um, you know, the, we just, you know, try to create... A, well, we don't try, we, we create a, a great environment for everybody to work in. And I'm a great believer in that if you have that atmosphere within the yard, it reflects on the horses and, you know, and how they perform. And I've always been a great believer in that. So, um, you know, something we take great pride in. And, um, you know, we have got some great staff, um, you know, every single one of them. We've got a fantastic team at the moment. And, um, you know, that bodes extremely well for the winter as well. I think a few of them outside, given the wintry conditions, have taken one look at this and thought, yeah. that's exactly where they want to be today, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I wish I was in there with the boss. No, you know, I grew up here, so I, I'm, you know, accustomed to it, and they, they all are. And uh, look, at, I, as I said this morning when you turned up, you know, it blows the cobwebs away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's, there's not a cobweb that can uh, get away with uh, being in the barn there with, with all the ventilations. The final fence now here for St. Calvados, the leader by about a length then. St. Calvados, the leader, grinding it out the top weight here, and that's a classy effort by St. Calvados. Should we talk about that day at Cheltenham in October? Because um, around about one o'clock, there was, there was doubt as to whether the meeting was going on. Just what's yeah, your right. thoughts at that point? Oh, gosh, just hoping that it would be on and that, um, that we would, be, you know, because at the end of the day, we know that those sort of conditions suit St. Calvados more so over than you know, uh, other horses because he just, you know, that big knee action of his and he seems to just get through it very easily where other horses struggle in it. Um, yeah. I knew it would suit him down to the ground. I wasn't so sure about my attempts qualifying horses. Uh, we decided to run because we felt that it was wet enough that they would go through it. And But actually, um, it was safe enough for them to run. But um, for Calvados, it was, it was always going to be, um, you know, it was, always, it was always going to suit him. Obviously, he, he runs well on, uh, you know, and all grounds but you know on that sort of ground you know even off top weight you know he's a very big horse as you've seen this morning he's 17 just under 17.3 he's a horse that's able to carry the weight but he does seem to be able to relish those conditions he's carried top weight in a handicap he's proved he doesn't have to lead and of course anybody that said he's not a Cheltenham horse he's proved them wrong as well yeah absolutely so many positives to take you know I think that was what um, was so overwhelming was that, that, that you know for him to bounce back in that style, not making the running, you know, um, and to do it under top weight, and you know, it, it was it was very pleasing, and um, you know, I, I guess it just bodes well for his future because you know, uh, can't imagine we'll make the running now, and we don't need to, which is ideal. What did it do for you personally to win at Cheltenham? It's it's just been like a, um, a you know an ultimate goal for us actually, and a big challenge for us as a team. You know, we're, we're not worried about it. We're just going to keep coming back and, and uh, keep trying hard. And hope, you know, it'll, I'm sure at some stage it'll come around. And, you know, I suppose from a personal point of view, um, it was just extra special because uh, it was my daughter's first day's racing. And she was only six weeks old. And, um, you know, first runner with her there at a race meeting. Um, and we have our first run at Cheltenham. We just couldn't write the script, really. So it was very special. <laughs> best movers I've ever sat on and for, for such a young horse at the age of six his presence is just phenomenal he's so big and so powerful as soon as he sees the camera he just starts to show off he's so um you know cameras coming before and he, he's kicking and he's booking and the next day no cameras here and he's like a lamb you know he'll go <laughs> around there with his head and his chest and well that's just him you know he's a massive character I'm a I'm a hungry hungry guy and I want to I want to ride the best horses and yeah so I had my, my sights set on him from, from early doors, so it was just working hard and getting there. And once I got him, he was not getting him off me then. Because he's achieved so much at a young age, we forget the lad's only six years of age. Mm. There's some horses that are just, start, are just beginning to jump fences at six years of age. And um, he's got a hell of a lot, of, he's still growing. He come back out the field over summer and he's, kind of, he's bigger and he's stronger and he's, he's more powerful and he's grown up a hell of a lot, he's matured, you know.
So Harry, you've had the Grade One winner already. Obviously, hopefully more to come as well. The first winner at Cheltenham on the the places on the board as well. The strike rate's good. In your sort of heart of hearts and, and sort of dream of dreams, what is the absolute optimum race? What would you love to win more than anything else? But it's funny because us trainers get asked that a lot, don't we? And um, you know, I always wonder because I just like to win them all. But <laughs> but uh, I suppose if it was to uh, absolutely had to pick one out. Um, I suppose it would probably be a national, you know, a grand national, I think, is just a, you know... Uh, Not the Cheltenham Gold Cup. Well, of course. I mean, obviously you take yeah, it, but... I take, I, you know, like, as well, like the Labrook Chase, because, like, Hen- you know, I grew up going to the Hennessy, yeah. and it's my local track, and, you know, that's just... So, and, you know, two-mile hurdlers, two-mile chases, staying chases, I loved them all, I love all the big races, but, you know, I suppose if I was absolutely have to pick one, it would be a national, you know, I think it's just, uh, you know... It's it's obviously uh, uh, the the most watched race in the world and and um, and uh, you know it's it's uh, obviously over the big fences and you know it, it is you know the most famous race in the world so I think that would be that'd be pretty epic. Surrey, where back in 1996, the winner of the Grand National was trained. That, of course, being Rough Quest, who lived out his days here, and he lies to rest here, uh, having lived to the grand old age of 30. You fast forward a few years, and the idyllic Henfold House is now the place where the former assistant to Nicky Henderson, Toby Laws, launches his training career. It's actually all happened rather quickly during the summer, actually. Um, you know, sort of a, a couple of people sort of suggested to me, sort of in in the spring, that sort of it could be an option. Um, but um, you know, it was it was still something that was probably going to be sort of way down the road. You know, um, yeah, I, I'd sort of started the process. I'd sort of started doing my sort of MVQ three and all that mm-hmm. kind of things. You know, which is all all part of it. Um, and it just so happened sort of that um, that Andrew Waite sort of advertised for for, for a, a trainer a trainer's position, a private trainer's position. Um, you know, I had sort of a couple of friends, sort of Nico and, and Luke Harvey. They both sort of rang me up and and said, "Look, this is this is a great, great job. You know, it's a beautiful place. It's um, you know, Andrew's been involved with it for so many years. It, it'd be a, it'd be a really, really solid place to start." And so, sort of, sort of, yeah, sort of went from there. Really, I sort of just you know emailed to uh, to just find out a little bit more. And um, you know, they soon got back to me and asked to send a CV. So I was like, "Okay, cool, right? Yeah, absolutely." Um, and then sort of, you know, he, he gave me a call and we chatted and um, he asked me sort of to come down and have a look around the place and, um, yeah, and he rang me a couple of weeks after that and, and offered me the job. Um, it was just, it was, it was very bizarre, it just, it just everything happened so quickly, you know. I, you know, I sort of, um, sort of only sort of, sort of just, you know, thought about sort of, you know, moving on to something different from, from Seven Barrows, perhaps going abroad or yeah. something like that and, and then this sort of, sort of came about and, you know, I obviously discussed at length with Nicky and sort of, you know, you know, should I do? You know, should I do this? And you know, and everything. And um, you know, and you know, it was sort of said, you know, this is a, this is a great position, and you know, what an incredible opportunity. Um, and yeah, it's, you know, we should give it a go. It is a, a little sort of corner of heaven because you said what, 15 minutes to Gatwick Airport. You, yeah. You're not too far away from central London. You, you just never know it, though, would you? No, no, you wouldn't. You know, it's it's, um, it's an unbelievable place. You know, uh, we sort of see in, in the background is just sort of. You know, ama- amazing parts of sort of the Surrey Hills that we yeah. we can see from here. You know, it's um, it's amazing. Um, yeah, just bizarre, bizarre that it's it's here in the middle of sort of, you know, <laughs> what is a fairly probably built up county. And you and you picked up a, an established system here with established staff. All the facilities were here, so um, so you know, it was just a case of sort of using them how I how I'd like really. Mm-hmm. Um, and Andrew very much sort of is you know he he's, he says you know absolutely sort of. Do whatever you want to do with them, train them however you like. Um, he said the only thing he asks is that I just u- you completely utilise the facilities, which Fantastic. is like, absolutely I'd love to, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so no, he, you know, they they just sort of yeah, sort of left it to me and sort of to, to do to do how how I like really. We're obviously not too too far from Box Hill. Well, many people will know that. That's where your grass gallops are, which is a little bit of a drive, but it's kind of worth the wait, isn't it, when you get there? It's it's, it's incredible. You know, we've got. Um, amazing expanse of grass up there we know we've got some some beautiful steep hills to, to do some real conditioning work on them to do warm-up counters on um and then sort of our actual sort of our main grass mile uh, is absolutely stunning it's it's you know it's in a, it's in a meandering valley um and it's just incredible it's on um 
it's it's on chalk basis so there's a, a layer of it on top of chalk so it's really really drains well um you know the we actually need loads of rain to, to use it and it can can keep raining and it will never be softer than good to soft you know it's just incredible I'm very lucky it's a real real asset how much did you learn about sort of obviously racing but obviously the training side of it and, and as well as that sort of yourself as an individual while you were there well to be honest i you know i i learned everything there really you know um you know i went there probably sort of thinking that um you know i've, I've sort of got got to grips with sort of with, with the basic things and, you know i've spent lots of time here there and everywhere and i thought you know i'm i'm really sort of confident as sort of doing and sort of you know and you go there and it's just like there's just so much to learn yeah. you know there is just so much to learn and um you know it's an amazing place to do that um I'd never stopped learning, even to the to, to the day I left it. And I'm still learning now. I still speak to Nikki quite quite frequently, and you know we sort of chat things through. And um, yeah, I don't think you ever stop learning, really. And um, you know, it's it was just such a great opportunity to to do everything. You know, to you know to to really sort of learn how to sort of you to to interact with owners, to yeah. to keep owners informed. Um, you know, how to train all different kinds of horses and all different types of gallops and um, and how to manage a team of staff, you know, um, you know, we had sort of, you know, 50 or 60 employees, you know, and it was sort of, you know, working with your colleagues to sort of to, to keep everybody sort of happy and get the best out of everybody. What's what's the makeup of the, the horses here? Mainly we've, we've mainly we've got a lot of novices, novice hurdlers, um, which is great fun. So um, so they're sort of early on in their career like me, really. Um, so, so that sort of makes up the majority. We've got sort of, you know, a couple of horses from the flat, um, a couple of Irish pointers, and we have got, we've got one that sort of is sort of slightly older and is sort of a handicapper. So, um, so you know, we, we, do, we have a bit of a mix, but so the majority would be sort of, yeah, just sort of young horses, sort of unexposed types. So after a few months, you've had a couple of runners so far. Has it been what you expected it to be? Or, I mean, could you even imagine what it was going to be like? I, I couldn't, I probably couldn't fully imagine what it was going to be like. Actually, I must say sort of it's, you know, although there's sort of, you know, stresses and strains and this, that and t'other, you know, that, that come with it, actually it's been an incredibly enjoyable time. Um, I've absolutely loved it and, um, you know, it's, it's a very quiet place, a very laid back place and sort of, I think I'm probably sort of actually almost at sort of my most relaxed actually, sort of, you know, um, when sort of, we, you know, we haven't, we haven't got that, that, you know, loads of horses and, um, Although sort of I'm working for Mr. Waits, I sort of I'm not sort of always necessarily rushing, you know, for 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 sort of you know a boss or, or whatever, you know. Yeah. It's so it's it's happening sort of in in sort of in our time, and we and we can afford to be relaxed and um, and stuff. And I, I've just loved it. And, and as, as well as obviously a place that's right at the beginning for you, you're sort of custodian of a place that has got a lot of history. <laughs> and actually, just over there, one of the most famous horses of the of the 1990s is buried over there. Rough Quest, who won the 1996 90, Grand National as well. There, there's a lot of depth and, and richness to this place, isn't there? Oh, there is absolutely. You know, um, <clears throat> there's been there's been lots of sort of top class horses trained here. I mean, um, Starlark, who is an absolute legend, he's still you know, here, he's still here yeah. um, and he's still sort of loving life. Um, you know, he's he spends his time sort of either leading horses around here, going hunting, or just having a lot yeah. of fun. You know. Um, so you know, yeah, there's you know a fabulous sort of a fabulous history to it, and, and that just that just gives you that that confidence of sort of you know um, that you can sort of train top class horses here, flat winners, you know, jumps winners. You know, it's it's just got it's got everything you could possibly need. You know, um, so it's fantastic. What's the the sort of short to short to medium term goal for you? What, what over the next couple of years? Well, I mean, um, <coughs> you know, short short term goals are sort of to get off the mark yeah. winners wise. You know, um, you know, we've I sort of tried to sort of set the goals in my in my head of sort of what what we're aiming for and we'll but I think primarily it's just sort of get as many winners as possible we get the horses to perform uh, the best they possibly can yeah. um you know I sort of long term sort of I mean my long term ambition is just to, is to be a top class trainer and yeah. um you know that's um just probably a, a long way away um but um you know we've got to have got to got to aim high to be able to actually get to this position is remarkable i mean i have to sort of pinch myself every now yeah. and then it's it's you know it's unbelievable it's all happened very quick as well so i mean it's yeah it's certainly Is it better that it did happen quickly do you think probably Just probably like yes yeah, yeah yeah i mean um yeah otherwise i probably would have been fretting for months on end <laughs> about, about how i could make it work so you know it, it probably is um no certainly it's sort of the, the the first part of the dream has definitely come true then the next part of the dream is to try and be as successful as we possibly can um and um we want to try and just find some, some, some great horses and create some great memories with some great friends and some great owners. It would be remiss of me not to come here and, and mention 
one of the most famous horses, if not the most famous horse in, in training, certainly in Britain. That, of course, out to your horse that you've had such a, a brilliant association with. And it, just on, obviously, on your previous life, looking after him, the likes of him, and of, of course, Mike Bite <coughs> as well, with Altior, it does sound as though there's, a, there's a, a new path for him this year. How exciting is that for you, knowing him as you do? Oh, yeah, very exciting. You know, um, you know I think we're sort of, you know, we were all pretty sort of satisfied sort of last year that the step up and trip, I th we think, would, would, would help him. Um, yeah. You know, he's, he's such a professional now. You know, I, I don't think he'll have too much of an issue staying, staying the trip. Um, you know, he settles so well now in his races and you know, he, he, he's just an utmost, utmost professional, you know, everything he does. Um, I mean, it's, it's incredibly exciting. You know, it could, could be a King George horse this year. It's just oh, fantastic. I mean, I'm, I'm certainly going to be you know, fully behind him every step of the way and probably still cheering louder. So say, would it still mean as much to you now? Oh, I would. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, Alti was, you know, he was a close friend for five years, yeah. you know, um, you know, I spent every day with him um, and, you know, it, it was it was it was tough to leave him, you know, um, it, it was really tough, actually, because. Was that one of the hardest bits of, the, of leaving the, the past life, as it were? I, I, I'd say so. You know, you, you, you really do sort of build up sort of great relationships with these horses, you know, and I was yeah. so lucky to ride so many great horses. Um, it was, you know, it did. It certainly sort of affected the, the decision, to, but. Um, you know, these opportunities don't come around very often and it was something that I just I had to do and I had to go for. Schooling morning here at Oliver Sherwoods and we're here to enjoy the action but also to find out a little bit more about Harry Bessing. Uh, Roanhurst is a very special place, it's got a lot of history and it's, uh, yeah, no, it's a very nice place to work. In. And tell me a little bit about your relationship and, and how you've managed to actually end up here. Uh, so I have to say I actually got the job through Tom Garner. Um, he's been a very long time friend of mine and about four years ago uh, he sort of got me the job in here and, and uh, haven't looked back since really. It's, been it's, um, it's kind of almost, it feels like it's the, the second coming of for her, Harry Besick in terms of, you know, going from professional to amateur, such a strange switch in order to reinvent yourself. Tell me about the thought process. Yeah, it was just, it kind of snuck up on me a little bit. Uh, I hadn't really planned it, um, but I was just, I was, I got back from France about a month ago and I was, um, just kind of thinking about the season, what, what, what's coming ahead. And the decision, it was more of just a realistic one. Um, you know, look, I was having a lot of fun as a conditional. Uh, I wasn't breaking any records, you know, by any stretch, but having, you know, a lot of fun and 10, 15 winners a year, it, it was great. Um, but I was just looking to the future. Um, like I say, I haven't got hundreds of horses behind me, but I've got the support of some great people and I wanted to make the most of that. Um, but it's a very hard game. And as a jockey, you know, it's very easy to be forgotten about. Uh, that you know, there's so many good jockeys coming through each year. But like, I'm really enjoying my riding, having a lot of fun doing it. Um, and I just wanted to add a bit of longevity to that. And hopefully, this move um, will help me with that, and maybe open up a few new opportunities along the way, and we'll see what happens. What set of circumstances, in your mind, might warrant? The decision to go back being pro? Uh, I haven't ruled it out. I don't believe you should ever close doors, especially in this game. Um, so it's, it's always in the back of my mind. Um, what would warrant it? I, I don't know. I've sort of, I've sort of got it in my head. I, I, I may permanently relocate myself in France. The training is very different. The tracks are different. Um, it's just a very different atmosphere, but it's, it's a welcome change and it's, it's been a great experience for me. Um, splitting my year in half, you know, going going to France and um, riding alongside you know, Felix de Giles and and uh, James Reevely and a lot of the top French riders. And we're watching the schooling this morning, which was was a great time to come down. And I could hear Oliver letting a few yelps out of him. Does he give you good advice as well? Uh, he gives me very good advice. He gets quite uh, quite cinematic sometimes <laughs> on the on the schooling ground. But no, it's all welcomed advice. Um, and he's, he's, he's been a lot of you know, great support to me over the years and I've learned an awful lot here. We've had, we've had some great days, uh, obviously like I said I haven't been breaking records here but I've been riding a nice few winners and uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun, obviously the best day would have probably sadly have been the day Clouds, clouds passed away. Um, to have ridden that double for, for Trevor Hemmings was, was very special and be probably one of my favourite memories and 
worst at the same time. Um, but just day-to-day -day stuff as well, you know, it's, it's, it's great atmosphere in the yard, this team are fantastic. Uh, from, from the head lad to the assistants, you know, we have a lot of fun. With the highs, we've got to talk about the, the lows as well. And the mother of all falls is how you described it that day at Sedgefield. Yeah, Sedgefield, it just keeps creeping back up on me. Um, yeah, that was uh, every, you know, I, I'm not unique in that sense. Every jockey has his bad days and bad falls and some much, much worse than me. It sort of loomed over me for a season or so. I felt fine, you know, I was healthy, I was fit, I was repaired, but it just, it left a bit of a dent. I was living with Tom Garner at the time and I must have been an absolute nightmare. He, I was sort of itching to get out of the bed and, and to go and do stuff and get back. Uh, and he was sort of <laughs> strapping me down, locking my bedroom door. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's like it, I say, any professional sport, you know, everyone's itching to get back. They, you know, they're always worried about waiting on the sidelines, what they're going to miss. And you know, what about some of the, your, your pals in the weighing room? I'm sure you've seen you know, friends and, you know, good guys, girls that you've, you've grown up with, one good horse can really turn them around. Yeah, I mean, that's the dream. That's the dream. I mean, like, a, a, lot, of, a lot of people have, have experienced it. I'm, I'm yet to, to have that one superstar. We're still sort of waiting for it. But, like, I think Tom Garner is a very prime example, you know, without mentioning names. Um, Travelled to America this year uh, off his own back and the guy's a dual grade one winning jockey now and, and that's incredible. Is that something that you would like to do? Would you like to travel the world, ride well, in, I, in different countries? Yeah, I've been very fortunate to have sort of seen some beautiful parts of France and, and a bit more of Europe, Slovakia and, and uh, Italy and stuff. It's been great, but now I am an amateur and I've, I've got a bit more free reign. Uh, I, I'd, I'd like to go sort of ride in America and, and some of these big amateur races and. Um, make the make the most of it, really, I suppose. Well, let's talk about being an amateur. You're going to have a, a crack at the title, a right good go, Harry. A lot of people, yeah, a lot of people have mentioned it. And um, look, it, just because I've been riding as a professional for four years, uh, I'm not going to walk in and, and swoop the title up. You know, there's a lot of talented amateur riders in the in the weighing room. Uh, it's probably all striving for the same the same goal. But um, I would love to achieve it. It would be, you know, it'd be a hell of an achievement. Well, we've seen you riding various horses this morning. Uh, have we got any that we're particularly fond of? Uh, we've got a lovely string here this year, and th there's probably too many nice horses to mention. Uh, I, I schooled a horse of Trevor Hemmings today called Tarada. Um, he's, he's quite special, and I'd love to see how his season um, comes together. And, and various other younger horses, uh, we just have to wait to get to the track. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot to look forward to and soon, you know, exciting to see how the season's going to pan out. We talked Trevor Hennings, you mentioned Tarad, I'm assuming chasing will be the, the ultimate at some point. What type of a horse is he? He is a chaser. Uh, he is a chaser. I, th I think Oliver, if he could, would have every horse a three mile chaser. Uh, that's kind of his type. And that's the stamp of the yard as well? That's the stamp of the yard, yeah. Oliver's got a very precise uh, type of horse. He, you know, he, he searches for the sales and uh, you, you can spot a Sherwood horse a mile away. Yeah. And he, uh, he fits the bill, so we seem to see what he can do. That's it for the latest edition of This Racing Life. Thank you to all that got involved in this week's show. Until next time, bye bye. <laughs>